Ah, good morning, me hearties. A very, very good morning to you. It is me, Scotty McClue, the World's Top Broadcaster, the first lord of the internet. And, of course, here we are live streaming with the World's Top pop-up on the World's Top Broadcast live stream platform. Facebook Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I say lovely, lovely to have you with us. Of course, we're nice and sharp this morning, so it may have taken some of you by surprise, but I'm Scotty McClue, and you must tell me about you. So on you come, and let's get chit-chatting as quickly as possible, because we've a lot to get through. Wonderful Jack is on. Dinky Doo Jack, good morning. Adam Spilby Hickson, welcome. Jason McHugh, good morning, Scotty Dinky Doo. Paul Francis Carroll's watching. Larry Donaldson, ah, Paul Francis Carroll. We will get the Skype on this morning. And then uh, let me just put that on right now while we are talking. And then perhaps you and I can get a wee chat as the day goes on. How fantastic is that? There we are. We'll let that fire up for a few minutes. Larry Donald's in Dinky Doo. Welcome, welcome. Kevin Stewart's watching. Wonderful. Good morning. Scotty McClure says, Kevin, good morning, Kevin. Great to have you with us. Lots and lots to talk about this morning. And so little time to do it in as always. Good morning, Scotty Dinky Doo. Good morning, Finley Morris. Lovely to have you with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fantastic. This is pop-up number 21, guys. And um, I'll do them until you lot get fed up. So there you are. And you can tell me it's not a problem. No, Scotty, I was sitting waiting for your stream, Scotty. Ah, Jack, so I didn't take you by surprise. You were right in there. Fantastic. Do you do a little bit of fishing and things like that, I wonder? Gordon Robertson. Gordon Robertson says, hi. Hi, Gordon. Always lovely to have you with us. We dealt with a few of the dafties yesterday during Her Majesty's birthday. There we are. There, They think they're so smart. Karim Zachariah is watching. Welcome, Karim. Uh, hi from Glenrothes, says the wonderful Martin Byrne. Welcome. Lovely to have you with us from Glen Bothis. Uh, good morning, Scotty, from Dunanda. Brett Tidswell, I was just good to say we're getting quite a lot of Scottish people on, and I'm wondering if that's just the way the platform arranges it. But uh, on you, Pop, from Australia. We love it. Do you want the hat? It's early for the hat, but we could just, we could pop the hat on. I think it's worthy of the hat. If you're coming on from Australia, I think the least that I can do is pop on my jackaroo and wish you good day and fair dinkum and fair dinky do. Fantastic stuff. That's what we want. So good morning from Dununder. Lovely to have you with us. There we are. Change of hat again. Oh, I've watched in pantomime. I could do a quick change, you see. Uh, now, Dave Roberts is watching. Welcome, Dave. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, of course. The wonderful Susan Forrest has joined us from Lancashire. Good morning, Susan. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, as we say. Mwah! Now, um, what have we got here? Let's get the sharing going right away, folks, because otherwise we get distracted, don't we? We get into conversation. Good morning, Scotty. It says Deborah Brett. Good morning, Deborah. Lovely to have you with us. And can everybody put a name of a Facebook friend below their own name, type it in, and send it off to them so they come and join us? Yes. Ron Morrow's watching. David Diston uh, and Ron's from Essex. Oh, hello there, Ron. Welcome. Lovely to have you. Uh, where are you? Are you near? Is it Epping Forest? Have I got that right? <laughs> so there we go. Margaret Sheldon, morning, Scotty. This is the wee lassie from the West Midlands. How are you today? We're great, Margaret Sheldon, and we very much appreciated your input yesterday. When I say we, I mean all the audience, because what happens with these pop-ups, you might just see that a few are watching just now live, but then they go out to, um, uh, you can get another showing later in the day, a watch party, that was it, a watch party, and then people send them round and people watch for weeks afterwards. It's incredible. Our first one 
is up to 5,800 people have had a look just at a wee pop-up on Facebook. You know what I mean? Just a, a way to pass a good hour, le bonheur du jour of the lockdown. And that's why I do it. And as I say, when you get fed up, we'll stop, you know, but don't tell me you're fed up if you're not. Uh, no, I don't do fishing, Scotty. No, I just wonder, Jack, you do a lot of gaming because you're very on the ball. So there you are. Not that that's anything to do with it. You'd be on the ball anyway, so there you are. Um, you're, you're, you're very sharp. You're what we call a sharp cookie. Um, I'm no happy. I wanted to be first in, but it looks like I was well beaten. Ah, Gordon, I can't say we were beaten in age, but um, he's a young gentleman, you see, and he's just right on to it there. Sometimes you'll get brilliant minds all think alike, as you know. And I'm not uh, blowing any trumpets, but this program has become a meeting of minds and a lot of very, very highly intelligent people. Yeah, you are. So there's a wee bit of a change in McClue's uh, programming. Uh, Carmick McCusker's watching Dinky Doo. Brett is well, all class. All class, fair dinkum. Good day. Uh, Gordon Sterling's watching. I should think so too. Um, oh, I'm Scottish as well. I forgot to tell you. Margaret Sheldon, never forget to tell anybody you're Scottish. It's the best thing you can ever be. There we are. Sometimes the accent's a giveaway, mind you. Scotty, it's great that human vaccine testing is beginning on Thursday. Absolutely, Jack. I uh, should be working on a vaccine, but um, it's a lack of uh, knowledge that stops me from doing so. So there we are. But otherwise, I'd be doing that. The death, these death figure reporting, obviously death certificates and death registry are a long way behind. Um I know what you mean, Ron, but I'm not sure if there are, for instance, when my folks passed away, we registered the deaths the next day. So there you go. But then I don't know how long it takes, would take that to become a statistic. Gemma and Marie McRae, imagine us all ending up as a statistic, for goodness sake. Leslie Brown, Dickie Do, Leslie W. Brown, forgive me. Morning, Scotty, and two lovely kisses. Mwah, bless you, thank you. Jack says, Craig Downey, so he's getting Craig up good. Finley Morris, come on, uh, Craig Minty, oh yes, get him up. It's time he was up, I say. Um, I'm just going to do a quick share, guys, and then we've got that done. If you can do the same, that would be fantastic. Do you see, I don't look down as much as I used to. And get the message out to people that go, I bet, is it no kind of the same in the mornings? No. Every show is different. Every show has a character. And uh, there we go. Now, um, who am I sharing with here? I'm sharing to the big Scotty McClue page. Have you all liked that page? Thomas Peden, dinky do, Thomas, come on, Thomas, up you get. Thomas got a wee bit, he was a wee bit upset yesterday because um, he didn't understand about royalty. And he did his head stuffed with nonsense when he was wee. Uh, Malden in Essex, Epping Forest is Surrey. So what am I thinking forest-wise? Now, come on. Of course, Epping Forest is Surrey, Ron Morrow. But why, why am I thinking forest? What forest? Have we got in Essex that I'm thinking of? Uh, Basildon, is that Essex? There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, um, was Basildon not James Bond's brother? I wonder. Um, fantastic. Good morning, Scotty. Gemma from Condorit. And dinky do, dinky do, Gemma. Lovely to have you with us, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Quick comfort break for McClure. Two seconds. Oh. Honestly, the heat in here this morning. Crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, on about fishing, have you read How to Fish by Will Ketchum? <laughs> you got me hooked there, I'll tell you. 
Uh, John Gatons, Dinky Doo, Calvin Allen, Dinky Doo, welcome, welcome, welcome. I see Jim Gallagher has joined us. Peter Garvin, welcome. Fantastic to have you all here. Yes, I do do gaming, Scotty, and I make sure that they are started on the hour. Is that very important, Jack? I mean, I'm not a gamer per se, but I do share the pop-ups with the gaming community. Will they want to see them? I ask you. I've got your full screen on the big iPad today. Usually you're on my phone. Gordon Robertson, how amazing. Somebody told me that they get me on the telly. They can uh, put me on their telly. Is this the case? And how do we do it? Michael Wallace, think you do. Because televisions and radios should be off when my clue's on. There we are. It's called a quid pro quo. Um, good morning, Scott McLean. How are we today? Oh, Kareem, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are very well. We are better for hearing you always. Chris Kirk's watching. Tell 10 to tell 10 about this, folks. Don't just sit in silence on your own and go, get this out here. Get people watching big style because we want to build a stream. Michael Wallace, good morning, Scotty Dinky Doo. Good morning, Michael. Lovely to have you with us and a warm welcome to Scotty McClue's pop-up live on Wednesday morning on Facebook Live. Dinky do. Stephen Minn is watching. Alistair King has joined us. Welcome, our top engineer. Lovely to see you on a wonderful Scotty sunny morning. Ah, Peter Garvin, I could not agree with you more. Uh, give me lots of thumbs up, guys, so I know you're watching. Kevin Stewart, Forrest Gump, right? So that's obviously one of your pals. Uh, and that, that would, that would fit. Yes. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky do, says Alistair King. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Ian Kerr, Dinky do. Welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Stuart Smith is watching. Welcome, Stuart. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lots and lots of lovely thumbs up there. And some hearts and smiley faces and laughing faces. Let's get them going. Uh, Gordon Sterling, Scotty, a meeting of minds. Exactly. Can we ramp up the pop-ups? Perhaps one in the morning at 4 a.m. for Agnes and the Australians. The 10 a.m. slot, then 7.30 after the one show, do you know, I don't think I've ever actually seen the one show because Emmerdale's on. And I think we're getting an Emmerdale tonight. They've rationed it. And I cannot wait to see how Kane deals with the bad cop. Oh, anybody else watching? Let me know. Give me a, a heart or a thumbs up or a smiley face if you've watched Emmerdale. Uh, love Basildon. You're hilarious, says Margaret Sheldon. Absolutely. We do our best. Now, Gordon Sterling, grammar. This is the grammarian in McClue coming out. I don't like this term ramp up. I think the Americans introduced it. Politicians, Tory politicians trying to be cool. Oh, yes, well, we are, uh, we are uh, ramping up the testing increase. So I've sent to um, the BBC, to ITV, to Question Time, to um, the political parties, and I've tweeted to them all from Scotty McClue. And Scotty McClue is a big tweeter. You'll see, I think it's 75,000 tweets I've sent. And we've got over 4,000 followers on Twitter at Scotty McClue. So if you've got a Twitter account, you get on to at Scotty McClue, you follow me big style, and you look at these tweets, and I have told them, can we drop the term ramped up and use increase? Or drop the term ramp up and use increase? Yes, well, we're increasing the testing as fast as we can. You know, we're not ramping anything up, all right? Ramping up is when you're loading cars onto a cross-channel ferry. Yes, you could ramp up these cars now if you want. A Hatfield Forest is in Essex. Gordon Robertson, you top man. Um, so there we go. Scotty, have you ever thought of going on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, yes, Jack, I was wondering, 
<coughs> I was wondering about it, and um, I think it uh, it would be a very good idea. You know, um, I would certainly get to a thousand pounds. I have no doubt about that. And I watch Mastermind, and one night I got every answer correct. I surprised myself because I came out with the answer and thought, no, and then do 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 do. I started, so I finish. <laughs> you passed on one. Oh, yes. So there we are. So it's quite funny. University Challenge is another one. But some of the University Challenge ones, I am way out my depth, particularly the kind of um, mathematical uh, stuff that, that gets asked. And I remember one student coming in, and he said um, something, I think it was to Jeremy Paxman was doing University Challenge, and he said uh, the answer, and Jeremy Paxman, good guess, and he went, it wasn't a guess, and he explained it. I love it. Fantastic. I also love when Glasgow tanks everybody, Glasgow University. <clears throat> Brian Hall, good morning. Good morning, Dickie, dear, my good man. Lovely to have you with us. Do you think Scotty McClure should go on who wants to be a millionaire? Karen Cox is watching Ninky Doo, Karen. Uh, no, that was Brooke Bond. He liked tea, not martini. Kevin Stewart, you are a wag. That is fantastic. Love Emmerdale, says Leslie W. Brown. Who's your favourite character, Leslie? Because there are so many goodies. So there were. I wouldn't like to be on the wrong side of Cain. Uh, you know, I think they are absolutely excellent. The whole lot. Fantastic. Uh, Jack says, yes, I watch Emmerdale, Coronation Street, EastEnders, and River City. Uh, I know River City. I haven't watched EastEnders, so I don't really know much about EastEnders. I have to fess up, because you're better to fess up. There's no shame in not knowing anything. I remember sitting with the chief engineer of a massively important, I want Mr. Basis to mention the business, very, very big British business. And I was sitting in a tea room in uh, Oxfordshire. Now, what was we're, Wantage? I was sitting in a tea room in Wantage in Oxfordshire with a very, very senior engineer. And I asked him something about the condenser on the steam engine. He said, uh, I'll draw it for you. And I said, I should know this. And he went, why should you? You're not an engineer. So there we are, absolutely right. And he drew it on a napkin in a tea room in Wantage in Oxfordshire. Uh, you would be okay on who wants to be a millionaire with that cough, Scotty. Oh, Kevin, for goodness sake, I had the cough for 20 years. <coughs> Did you see Giles Brandreth recite... Uh, God Save the Queen is a poem. Fantastic. You must see it, Scotty. I put a link to it, one of your discussions. It's on Facebook, and you should search to find it. It's amazing. I did see it, Gordon, but I didn't get round to seeing it. If you're a busy man on Facebook, as you know, you get back what you put out. So there's so much comes on. So people want a discussion. And when it comes to discussions about the royal family, I know what their response is going to be, and uh, I just can send mine back, you know, daft as a brush with no heat, these people. Um, you can always get someone to cough for you, and who wants to be a millionaire? Margaret Sheldon. I think that would be um, out with the rules. So there we go. Billy Hunter's watching Diggity. I did w love watching Quiz. Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you loved watching Quiz last week. All right. Grim Loud and Diggy Do. Habib Malik has joined us. Welcome, Habib. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, Murray O'Donnell's watching. Good morning, Scotty, says the wonderful Murray out there in Stirlingshire. Excellent. Kenny and Paddy are my favourites so far. Uh, Kenny and Paddy. Yes, poor Paddy. He's got it bad, hasn't he, worrying about the wee one? You know? Do you think uh, think that goes on? Did you see him just losing it with his dad, doing his nut? Because his dad had gone into the shop for some some sweets. Uh, can you throw everything at the pop-up, Scotty? Agnes refuses to get up before 1 p.m. Well, I'm wondering, I was wondering about doing 
a late night show. We'll see how the lock time go, the lockdown goes. But kind of, you know, 10 o'clock ish, uh, something like that at night. I don't know. The thing is, with when we first popped up, we had thousands and thousands and thousands watching. I mean, I think one of them's got just come up to 30,000 joined me. And now it's a few hundred. Now, I'm not sure if that's the platform or if it's people just have a lot of things to do or if people are fed up with McClure's pop-ups. I don't know. But I'd quite like to build a stream where it builds and builds and builds so we get more and more and more people. And if we do go down um, the meeting of minds route, then obviously the audience will change and it will attract you guys, the intelligentsia. So it's up to yourself. Uh, I've no time for TV soaps with enough real life drama to deal with every day at home. Alistair King, I know what you mean, and I don't think I'd rush to buy a cottage in Emmerdale Village. Uh, not with that shower. Uh, wasn't Mr. Sheen good as Chris Tarrant? Think he'll clean up at the British Drama Awards with such a polished performance? Kevin Stewart, his performance was outstanding. I did love the humour in the court. I said last week the defence solicitor, well, I suppose she's a solicitor to trade, but the defence counsel, would that be correct? She would be AQC, the defence counsel, counsel for the defence. Uh, but I thought she was fabulous. That was um, Ms. McGrory. Yes, fantastic. Uh, Finlay Morris, I'm 21 minutes late. Thomas Beedon, we thought you'd done your nut and gone off in a cream puff because you hadn't been brought up understanding about the Queen yesterday and you seem to be in a wee bit of a cream puff. But I hope you're fine because you and I are fine, if that makes any difference. And I do understand, uh, as long as you join and tell 10 to tell 10. So there we go. Excellent, yes. Um, I can always remember being at a dinner and um, I was sitting beside a lovely guy who's a, a big Celtic supporter, Mon their hoops. And um, I can remember the MC said, if you'll all be upstanding for uh, the national anthem for God Save the Queen. And he looked very, very, very embarrassed. And I said, are you okay? Justice came over his face. And he was almost tearful. He said, I, I can't stand up for that and I said why, why not he went because I, we don't do that I'm a big and I said you listen don't stop worrying I patted him on the back hope it didn't seem patronizing I put my hand on his shoulder and patted him on his shoulder I said don't worry about it nobody will mind you know and it was true, he sat there and he said later, and he was almost tearful with it, he was very upset. Um, I mean, I would just have got up on my feet, uh, you know, it wouldn't have been a problem, you know. Uh, so there you are, but he said that he, he didn't feel like standing up. So there you go. Um, made it, morning Scotty, morning Robert Rovers, lovely to have you with us. As long as you join and tell 10 to tell 10, Finley Morris, yes. Share time, everybody. Let's get sharing. We share, we share, we share. We share Scotty McClue's program. Wonderful chat. Everybody seems to love the chat about shipping and about motor cars and all that stuff. But I want a lot more of the ladies joining us. We don't want to become a men oriented. I wouldn't have stood either. No, you wouldn't, Thomas, because... You've had your head stuffed with nonsense about it, and I understand. Uh, Scotty, I've got so to see the Queen's the Queen of everyone. Doesn't matter your background, your relationships, your your creed, your colour, your gender. You know, everybody can feel free to stand up for the Queen. Uh, think of all but one of the Celtic team born within 20 miles radius of Celtic Park. That won't happen again. Teams getting players from all over the world. Well, Scotty McClure's welcome in the boardroom 
of uh, both the big football clubs. I know that because I was invited, and I'm not a football man, and I said they had some shopping to do. <laughs> and if you'd heard the silence at the other end of the phone, Mon the Hoops is Margaret Sheldon, absolutely, but we don't do all that. We don't do the football on here. Um, I have my reasons, Scotty. I don't recognize that. No, you will, Thomas, because you've been, your head's been stuffed with nonsense not to. Do you see what I mean? And that's where you must start learning. Get yourself an education. Do you know, for years, I didn't understand how this country works. I didn't understand about our head of state. It's fantastic. And you'd be up on your feet. Absolutely, in seconds. Uh, Fiona McRae, Fiona McRae, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do. Nikki Graham's watching. Excellent stuff. Lovely to have you with us, Nikki. And a very warm welcome. So there we go. And Thomas, even the fact that you've used that word means you don't understand. So when you say, I don't recognize, what you mean is, I don't understand. I understand what you mean. Hey, dinky do pal, says Hector Brown. Hello, Hector. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty, have you ever taken a stroll along Aberdeen Beach? Finlay Morris, fit like loon. Can I tell you that I lived in Aberdeen and I worked at a wonderful company called Grampian Television, the ITV contractor for the north of Scotland. And uh, I loved, absolutely loved, loved, loved um, walking along the beach at Aberdeen, the beach ballroom, tremendous. And I used to stay out uh, further away, out towards Ellen, Ellen and Udney, and uh, I used to take the dog for a walk on the sands there, the Foveran Sands. Wonderful, wonderful. I think that's not far away from where Donald Trump since got his golf course. Is that right? Or or is his um his his place? So there we are. Uh, Alison King, my charity fundraiser for Air Ambulance Scotland has been a big disappointment so far, Scotty. I understand everyone's struggling for money, but if it wasn't for these amazing people, a lot of us would possibly not be here. I expected a bigger response. It can be a wee bit disappointing asking for money on the internet now. I mean, I know I've got a GoFundMe account, gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. I've got paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word. And I have to say, I've been overwhelmed at the generosity and the kindness of people because I'm only looking for maybe a pound, two pounds, five pounds. Some people put in a tenner, twenty, twenty-five, that sort of thing, fifty pounds, because people love Scotty McClure. And what I do with that, it would go straight to advertising and helping to buy better equipment. For instance, I hope the phone's not listening here. I could do with better cameras and lighting and things like that. And I lost my life savings. Um, to uh, to somebody in a business, right? They didn't go into the business. They went to this other person um, from that point of view. So um, that's something I encountered, and that curbed my investment in the media because everything I made went back into media. You know, that was how I roll, really, because, uh, I mean, we can't take it with us. Uh, there ain't no pockets in a shroud, as they say. Stephen Lipton, dinky do, Peter Connolly, dinky do, lovely to have you with us. The majority of the nations of the world are in envy of our monarchy. What a tremendous job our Queen does. Yes, she does. I had um, some idiot yesterday saying that she hadn't what, and we'll see if they're putting in a shift at 94. You know, because she will still be working. The red boxes will be coming in. She will be looking at stuff. She'll be signing stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, she knows how to make up her mind. I remember one of the private secretaries trying to encourage her not to accept the patron, um, uh, the position of patron 
of something to do with dogs. And the private secretary said, I'd rather thought, ma'am, because of your association with the, can't remember the number, but say the 24 other dog charities, that perhaps on this occasion, and Her Majesty went, hmm, and put the request aside. So that's Her Majesty speak for, I'll decide that. You decide certain things. I will make that decision on that particular thing. Because uh, when you've got very, very senior civil servants, and these guys really know their stuff. I mean, it's quite a challenge being um, the top man at the palace. You know, I mean, it's quite a challenge. But uh, that was that one. So on that occasion, Her Majesty said, you know, the jury's still out on that one. Wonderful stuff. So there we are. I'd rather thought, ma'am. So that's the emphasis. Now, this is what we'd quite like you to agree to, Your Majesty, if you're up for that. Um, you know, but um, occasionally, you know, she'll know that they've done all their stuff and done the research. And the lovely other thing about the monarchy it is virtually self-financing. You know, it's, it's fantastic. I think we may have to contribute about 50, 60 p. Trump's cause between Aberdeen and Ellen is not popular in the North East Scotty. There's a wee surprise for me. I wonder why. Alistair will look up and make a Alistair will look it up and make a contribution. There's a wonderful Kevin Stewart gonna look up Alistair's uh, air ambulance and see if we can pop a pound or two in. Thank you, Kevin. You'll find the link on my page. Thank you very much. So there we are. So if you want to pop something into Alistair King's birthday appeal uh, as of yesterday for uh, the air ambulance in Scotland, then I'm sure that would go down very well. Barry McConaughey is watching. Didn't you do, Barry? Lovely to have you with us. And uh, you see, I don't beg for any money uh, for the shows. It's entirely up to people if they would like to give something. If you think, no, no, no. Scotty McClure has brought me a few laughs over the years. I can give the old guy a fiver. Uh, Scotty got an email from my mortgage company offering me a three-month holiday. They're just teasing me. I think you all know we can't travel anywhere just now. Well, what I did yesterday, I took the independent live on a watch party, and there was a super guy on discussing holidays with people. So these wee things, if I put something up, guys, try and watch it because I've put it up with you in mind. So there we are. I thought, I think my my viewers would enjoy this. Well, my viewers are the world. Sharing. We need more sharing. What is going on? <laughs> there we go. Complete forgot. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Let's get that wee figure in the corner right up to 100. Have you still got any dog pictures? Yes, Martin Bim. I meant to um, put one up yesterday. So there will be some more dog pictures appearing. And do you see him in video? Try and go on to Scotty McClue's TikTok. I'm massive on TikTok. And there's a video of the wee Labrador doing an outrun, a retrieve and a return. Fantastic dog. A wonderful wee guy, even with a little game leg. Morning, Scotty. You're looking very dapper at this time of the morning. Mark Jupert, I believe that it's a mark of respect for who you're going to see. And I'm coming to see you. So it matters. You know, I don't want you looking at some old, uh, some old tramp or something like that. Uh, was that Clark Kent, Scotty McClure? Kevin Stewart, Clark Kent. Um, I used to, when I was on ITV, newscasting on ITV, I um, used to, apparently, I had little round glasses I put on, and I used to look like Clark Kent, according to the lady in the fish and chip shop on the way home. And um, she said to me one night, she's a Glasgow lady, and I used to go in and she'd nudge the girls, and the girls would come out the back, because I was quite presentable in these days, and they'd go, Don't him off the daily. And they'd go, Right. And they'd come out and they'd go, Hi, Clark Kent, what are you wanting? 
And I was, and then she said to me, like, wait, wait, are you going off the night? And I thought, what way am I going off? And I couldn't quite get it. And she was, of course, talking about Superman. And apparently uh, Superman was seen at the airport and he'd had a light refreshment. And when he got to the gate, they said, I'm sorry, Superman, but uh, you're actually too drunk to fly. And they went, I know, that's why I'm taking a plane. <laughs> a wee merry jape, Superman, of course, would not drink. Uh, no matter how small the donation, it will go far for helping this wonderful charity that could potentially be helping one of us one day. And without donations from the public, this simply wouldn't happen. I had a friend whose major charity was Air Ambulance. And sadly, he took a heart attack and, uh, and passed away. And the Air Ambulance, as far as I understand, appeared uh, and worked to see if they could revive him. Fantastic. So there you go. Um, sadly, it, uh, it was too late, but, you know, wonderful that they were there. Uh, no matter how small the donation, absolutely, Alistair King. Morning, Scotty. How's things this morning? Oh, David Steele. Fantastic show this morning. You people are just wonderful. You're gorgeous people. I hope you're all surviving the lockdown. Do tell me. We can get a discussion going here. In fact... If people are watching, I wanted to get our top organist to Skype me. And I was going to set up the Skype. I get distracted. More sharing. Um, share to your story. This is public, by the way. The public. What if the public saw me? Oh, what would they think? Uh, good morning, Scotty. I hope you're well. This is John McClucky. John McClucky, Yes. Thank you. The reason I was asking yesterday is you were dealing with these dafties who were anti um, the monarchy, and you did a wonderful job with them, John. Well done. And some of them were quite rude. What I find is a lot of these people insult you if they've not really got an argument. So they just insult you. You know, that's what they do. They haven't got an argument. They think, I'll just insult this person. And uh, we shouldn't be doing it. I'm just going to share in a wee group, guys. If you could do the same, that'd be great. Uh, so there we are. Kevin Stewart. What's that one? Don't quite get that one, Kevin. So there you are. I've, I've missed the link there. Oh, yes. That's because you wore your underpants on the outside. I looked like Superman. Yes. Superman was an excellent program. I watched it for years. The wonderful Royston Mayo's watching. Good morning, sir. Dinky do. I'd love you to produce Scotty McClue. We would get on like a house on fire. Alan Clark, Dinky do. Lovely to have you with us. We'll try now. Not yet, not yet, Paul Francis Carroll. We're not signed in yet. Just uh, give me a second or two to sign in and then try. So there you go. So I'm signing in, guys. Bear with me. Just signing in to Skype. And you're thinking, why doesn't he do that before the show? Because I think the problem is it goes a bit funny. I don't know if it's other devices or whatever. And uh, you think Skype's ready and it's not. Uh, right, here it goes, here it goes, just a, just a wee second now. Stick with me, stick with me. Bear with Scotty McClure. Yes, because McClure knows best. Oh, yes, there we are. Right, I hope this works. Why do we cross our fingers? Why do we cross our fingers? Now then, try that now and see if we can get a hold of you, Paul Francis Carroll. Very important, the world's top organist. Give that a shot and we'll see if we can get a hold of Paul Francis Carroll, everybody. If he comes on, that will be just wonderful. So there we are. So uh, I'm going to do some more sharing. Can you all do the same, guys? Get you put in the name of somebody you know that would enjoy watching in our morning pop up. Get them up. You know, I think that's important. Just sharing to a group here. Hope this works. This should come up with a bit of luck. I've got a slow computer. That's another thing. The pennies. 
would go towards seeing if I could pick up a fast second-hand computer. So there we go. Scotty McClue fan group. Group of fans. There we are. I've just posted it to that. So if you're all in that group, you should get it. Uh, John McClucky says, I also... I, th I think they also insult you. Come back to that. Here he is. Paul Francis Carroll. Uh, uh, good morning, Scotty. Uh, good morning. This is a joy and a privilege to hear you, my lord. I just thought I would be one of the first people to recommend that you we need to all get back and call you rather than sitting behind our keyboards typing away. It's a lot better to actually yes. call you. Yes, the only thing is, Paul Francis Carroll, I learned at my lesson I need to build a trusted list because when a couple of silly wee boys thought they would say a sweary word, do you know what I mean? And uh, it's do you not have? Well, we do you not we, have the delay. Uh, not yet, you see. So, can you see my dilemma? Because I wanted to open this up to the world and have international calls and uh, deal with them per se. But uh, your, your, your problem is that sort of thing, and it spoils it for everyone. Now, these are just very, very immature wee guys, but they think it's funny. They don't realize that it means scrapping the whole broadcast because they're into that way of thinking on the Internet that you spoil something that's good. Do you know that kind yes, of thinking? I know what you're saying. You know, and you yes. will have heard this, you know, you'll have said, I'll play the, the organ for you, which you play exquisitely. And um, somebody said, oh, I don't know, I know that stuff. It's so sad. And you think, where are you from? You know what I mean? What planet do these people live on? <laughs> I know. I know. I, I, know. I, I was I once think playing give, I think you should give it a go because I think that... Um, the the people is a lot better to have a debate um, live when you go when you go back to the days of if when everyone called you yes. then the show was was fantastic oh wow and huge and we're able to get back to that I believe yes it's I mean it's only different now but we are I think you'll agree hence the reason you're watching it's the intelligentsia we've got. So we've kind of turned things on its head a bit. Yes, uh, you can have intellectual conversations as well. We, I used to hear that as well when you did a uh, when you had a, a radio show in Lanarkshire, and those were fantastic days. You had lots of people giving uh, amazing advice um, and insight into history, and uh, just to listen to these people come on to your show and talk about this. Um, you had you had a lot of information and you learned a lot as well. Yes, well, it, we all learn. I mean, it's a, you know, I'm a lifelong learner, as are you, Paul. And, uh, you know, it's fantastic. But I can remember, I must tell you, I was sitting in a church just about, I mean, I'm no great shakes on the organ, as you know, but uh, I was sitting in a church about to start a service and this lady said, play something cheery, it's not a funeral. Can you imagine somebody saying that to you just at the start of a service? <laughs> there was a, a You're famous, sitting there with uh, everything organist. in your head, you know? There was a famous organist, um, he's now sadly passed away. His name was Carlo Curley, a very famous American yes, organist. Yes. And he encouraged people, organists, um, after his recital to play something like the Liberty Bell during the offertory. And they all found that quite amusing. But um, there is um, a lot of secular music that you can play in church it doesn't have to be always sacred it can be anything oh absolutely i mean i've sat down at the start of a, a service or a mass and uh, we've been getting some scottish tunes loch lomond and the road to dundee and that sort of thing lovely absolutely lovely to listen yeah. to well, can I just encourage everyone else to call in the sensible people only because it's a lot r refreshing uh, to hear other people as well. Uh, you hear a lot of, see a lot of comments and you would like to um, hear what they have to say. I, I'm a great believer in, 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 in talking rather than sitting behind a keyboard typing away. I think Absolutely. it's a lot more entertaining 
And if you can trust the people that um, come onto your show to call you, then I think that that offers a better variety. So that's my message to everyone who's listening to get onto Skype and to call Scotty, um, even if it's just a couple of minutes to say how you are or what you're doing or if you have a question. It's uh, a lot more beneficial, I think, um, rather than just sitting behind a computer. Paul Francis Carroll, you've always been a great inspiration to me. And uh, I think that you may just have started a whole new thing altogether. That would be great. I would Fantastic. love that to happen. Fantastic, yeah. Padre. And Kiri Elezion, I say. And, um, Kiri Elezion, and Godspeed, and happy belated Easter as well to you. What a wonderful man. Bless you. Paul Francis Carroll, I thank you. Thank you very much, Scotty. Thank you, do. Ta-da, la, thank you, do. There we are. Thank what a do. top man. Now, was that not wonderful? Could you all hear Paul? Uh, that's the important thing. Um, John McClucky says, I think they also insult you when they lack intelligence, Scotty. You handled them great, as you always do, with the clowns. John McClucky, I thank you. We have to deal with the clowns, but we're helping the clowns. Uh, the Queen would put these people who say she hasn't worked to shame when it comes to working. Absolutely. I mean, this lady, you know, five o'clock in the morning, you know, they take her a wee cup of leaf tea um, and um, she has to get up and say Manchester today and all the rest of it and get dressed and everything. Now, I know there's people to help, but any um, great uh, theatrical setup would have people in the costume department to get all that stuff on. It's uh, quite wonderful. And then whatever mode of transport, and off she goes. And she's very, very good and very tolerant. Incredible. James McHugh loves Dinky Doo. Paul Ross, Dinky Doo. Welcome. Lovely to have you with us, Paul. What a top man. No matter what you do on the internet, there'll always be a few clowns trying to spoil it. Well, we had this on the YouTube at first, Alistair, but uh, I do love the Skype idea because I've had to put up with, as this is fess up time, I love to have a talk show and a talk debate with people. And uh, that's what other people like to hear. And uh, because of the changes in radio and television, thinking they're modernizing, and in actual fact, they're just losing their audience that existed and loved them, uh, thinking they're modernizing. Um, and the problem with that is McClure is timeless. Supposing you put me up if I survived at 98 and we could still do a good bit of debating, then that show would have a massive audience because it's what we do. And there's a lot of humor. But I've had to type and type and typey type, and that's not the way to communicate, this is. So what Paul was saying, I'm actually up for that. Um, so there we go. Finley Morris, can we have Marching Through Georgia later on the organ, Scotty? Marching Through Georgia, what a lovely tune. Uh, Dinky Doo, Scotty, top of the morning to you. Ah, Nicky Graham, top of the morning to you. Jim Wilson, God bless the Queen, says Leslie W. Brown. I thought he was going to play his organ. I was looking forward to a tune, says Gordon Robertson. Well, you see, the problem with Gordon is with certain tunes. Paul did come on and play a wonderful tune once, and the video wasn't acceptable because there was a tune in it, and somebody would be copywriting that. Skype's good. It's nice to have a proper chat now and then. Well, I enjoyed that, Alistair. And uh, you've been on Skype, Alistair. You know, you and I have had a chat on Skype. Fantastic stuff. We like that. If you want to make a note, folks, it's scotty.mcclue. So there we are, scotty.mcclue. That's my Skype handle. And um, then you can Skype in for a chat. But we had to banish um, two wee yobbos for, uh, for swearing. Uh, yes, we could hear him, Scotty. But I do have a question you might know the answer to. Um, was the Corries, were the Corries, as in the Scottish folk music band, were they always a two-member band? I've heard that there was... 
three of them. Yes, they were originally the Corrie Folk Trio. And they were also joined by a lovely lady singer called Paddy Bell. So they were quite often known as the Corrie Folk Trio and Paddy Bell. Now, I don't know what the... I can't remember the name of the third member, but then um, Roy and Ronnie went out on their own, and they were massive. And they were very, very influential, and they revived all these Scottish songs and gave them light and colour and brought them up to date, you know. So their rendition of Loch Lomond is stunning. Their rendition of... Um, McPherson's rant is stunning. Their rendition of the Bonnie Lass of Fivey is stunning. Um, so all these things, Jocko Hazel Dean, stunning. You know, the news from Moidart, stunning. The Sky Boat Song, stunning. Kate Dalrymple, stunning. You know, wonderful, wonderful. Westering Home, stunning. And it said on the uh, record sleeve, uh, sit back and enjoy this and sing your bloody head off. <laughs> I loved them. And the Corrie's Live, to go to a Corrie's Live, it was packed, absolutely heaving. I saw them in Greenock Town Hall in about maybe 1968 or 69 or something like that. And I remember coming out, and the lovely people that had taken us, one was going, yes, but at the end, it was beginning to get a little bit near the edge. And I said, what, what, what do you mean, sir, near the edge? And he went, a little bit nationalistic, because what was happening was everybody was stamping their feet and clapping along with Flower of Scotland, right? Because it was Roy Williamson that brought us Flower of Scotland. Roy Williamson was uh, an OG, an old Gordonstonian. He went to Gordonston School um, up in the northeast, lived in forests. Lovely man. And uh, his daughter wrote a book about him. I think, sadly, his daughter passed away. But she wrote a book about uh, Roy Williamson. And at Gordonston School, there's a memorial tree to um, Roy Williamson, uh, Flower of Scotland. So there you go, folks. So the Corrie Folk Trio and Paddy Bell. Hope that answers your question, David. Um, my favourite TV programme of all time is Bewitched. Samantha, Darren, Endora and Aunt Clara. Oh, Elizabeth Montgomery. And who played Darren? Watched it when I was a wee boy and still love it. What's your favourite all-time TV show? Well, Gordon Robertson. You and I, great minds obviously think alike. Because I loved Bewitched as well. Uh, a lot of it's jealousy with the clowns. They're not blessed with the intellectual capacity to join in the debate. So they use spoiling tactics. Yes, I think there's a lot of jealousy. Jealousy is a very strange thing. I had somebody who I thought was a very, very dear friend of mine. And he just lost it on the phone one night. And, uh, and that was that. And um, and it caused a huge ruction. And I couldn't understand what was behind this. And then I realized for some reason, the Lord knows why, he was jealous of me. And I can't understand why anybody would ever be jealous of me. Because most folk I meet, brilliant people, I think, I wish I was them. But there's no jealousy, and I don't covet things. I don't have envy, I don't have jealousy, I don't have malice, and I don't have pride, apart from a pride in knowing that a job's well done, which I got from my father, I think. Uh, so there we are. Uh, I actually know how to work it. It's not like a car or motorcycle. It took a while for me to figure it out, Alistair King. You are clever. Um, good morning, Scotty. You're doing a grand job, my friend. Keep up the good work. You should have a chat show on TV. They'll be better than most of the guff that's on there just now. Jim Wilson, you are very, very kind. I have to agree with you. I think McClure should be on 
commercial television, or public service broadcasting. Margaret Sheldon says, I love this hour, Scotty. You learn something new every day. Great comments. Margaret, a privilege and a blessing to you, my darling. Thanks, Scotty. I saw Ronnie Brown live at the King's way back in 94 or 95. I was 15. My mum and dad took me. It was brilliant. Ronnie Brown is outstanding. Ronnie had to soldier on and um, do his solo singing, which is beautiful. I've got CDs and everything. But Roy and Ronnie together were just remarkable. Their harmonies and their power. It was the power. And their humour, their humour was brilliant. And um, on stage, there was always a, a little bit of a laugh going on, you know. Um, I remember they had a wee, whether it was staged or not, it doesn't matter. And one had picked up the other's instrument. And he went over to him and took it off him and said, get your own bloody mandolin. <laughs> and they'd created instruments, these big sitars with about seven instruments in them. Beautiful. Uh, Dick York played Darren in Bewitched. Fantastic. American stuff. And the lovely Elizabeth Montgomery, Samantha. I thought she was gorgeous. So there we are. And a wee bit of a crush on her, I have to say, as Samantha. But I wouldn't mind going with a woman that could waggle her lips and like all the washing gets done. So there we go. And of course, but you had to put up with her mother. I think Darren was very good at coping with having the old witch around. When I say old witch, I'm not being unkind. Uh, so there we go. Bewitched Dari, Dad did. Da -da 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 -da. Those were the days. What channel was it on, guys? Who can remember what channel it was on? Um, you know, tap me in, uh, type in if you know what channel uh, Bewitched went out on. Because I can remember our first television, it only got BBC. And not BBC One or BBC Two or BBC Three or BBC Four or BBC Extra or BBC Digital or BBC World News. Just BBC, because that's all there was. So there's black and white telly, and there was a big aerial over the window, and I can remember my father standing up on a table, adjusting this, and our job was to shout, no, better, yeah, no, no, gone again, yeah, yeah, hold, hold that there, yep, yeah. and my dad said, well, I'm not standing here the whole night holding this, and we had great big sash windows, Four panes, not six panes, four pane sash windows, big Victorian windows. And he, the aerial was flexible, great big flexi rod. And he managed to flex it into the window panes. So there we are. Um, Gordon Robertson, Bewitched, I've got box set of all episodes on DVD. Gordon, that's above and beyond the call of duty. I would uh, class you as an enthusiast. Wonderful. So there we are. Uh, are we doing any more sharing? It was an American broadcasting channel, yes. But what uh, did it go out on in this country? Anyway, um, one of the neighbors got ITV. And I went in and I saw an ITV at 15 companies. And uh, one of them was the London company, uh, which became Thames Television, was Associated Rediffusion. And I used to go up and watch Richard Green as Robin Hood and uh, a very young Roger Moore as Ivanhoe. What about that for you guys? Remember that? Sorry for boasting, says Gordon Robertson. Gordon, you can boast, my boy. Yes, you're very welcome. Gordon's boasting that he's got the box sets of Bewitched. So... All the envy, jealousy, malice, and pride will be kicking in now, guys. Channel 4. As far as I can remember, watching it on along with Land of Giants and Lost in Space. Fantastic. Anybody used to watch Fireball XL5? You know, I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you round the universe on Fireball XL5. Da-da-da-da-da-da. 
Fantastic stuff. As children, we loved it. Super Mario Nation. And that was the wonderful Lou Grade. Because this guy had popped in and said he did a show with little puppets and he blew things up and there were tiny pyrotechnics and spaceships and things. And every other company were going, ah, nah, not for us. You know, same as they do with Scotty McClure. Oh, it's, it's an old Scotty. All that sort of idea, right? And um, he went to Lou Grade, the wonderful Lou Grade, big cigar. I take as much of this as you can give me. Jerry Anderson, Super Mario Nation, Super Puppets, um, Fireball XL5, Stingray, Thunderbots, Captain Scarlet and the Misterons. Um, what else was in Super Mario Nation, guys? Just fantastic, because Lou was, like me, a showbiz guy, an entertainer. And he thought, this will go down superb. And it did, of course. Virtually everything Lou Grade did was a success, except I think the, fa the film raised the Titanic. He said it would have been cheaper lowering the Atlantic. <laughs> I don't think it grossed at the box office quite as much as he would have liked. Uh, Channel 4, as far as I can remember watching it, Along the Land of Giants and Lost in Space. Yes, David Steele, sorry we got that one. Uh, Joe 90. Joe 90, Gordon Robertson, you're spot on. Um, and it was a Sunday afternoon that a lot of the Super Mario Nation went out. I think Thunderbirds, were they on a Saturday evening around 6 o'clock-ish? Fireball XL5 was on weeknights, I think, around 5. I used to watch One Foot in the Grave, a cracker. And the Bill, oh, Cracker, sorry, and the Bill, I thought you meant Cracker. One Foot in the Grave, the wonderful Richard Wilson from Dunlop Street in Greenock. There you go, a great Scottish man, a wonderful actor. Uh, was Dick York not replaced on Bewitched? Oh, I just remember Darren, black and white. BBC London, says Margaret Sheldon. All right, so it was net, it was the BBC. It was network. And remember, an aerial used to come up for the news, BBC News, and it put out a signal. Uh, Hugh Beatty is watching. Thank you, Hugh. Lovely to have you with us, Scotty McClure. We're out of time. We need to go. God, time flies when you're enjoying yourselves. Guys, it's just been fantastic this morning as ever. Please take great care of your dear precious selves. Stay in, stay home, stay safe, stay fabulous. This is Scotty McClure saying dinky-doo to every one of you. Have a great day, lads. ta -ra! Hey! Peter Connolly, what about Glenn Michaels' cavalcade with Rusty the dog and an old lamp called Paladin that had a Scottish accent? Time's caught up again, Scotty. See you tomorrow. See you, lads. Gordon Robertson. Yes, he was. Have a good day, Scotty. Thanks, guys. Ta-da, lads.